Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our safety and accessibility presentation for educational assistance. We'll just kind of wait here a few minutes, just let people in as they come. Um, just for the duration of our uh, presentation, if you wouldn't mind just um, uh, turning your cameras off if you haven't already and also uh, muting yourself just to help with any feedback that might happen. Okay, awesome. So my name is Brittany English and I am an occupational therapist and I'm joined here with my colleague Kylie Martell who is a physiotherapist. And we're going to, so again, we're going to be talking about safety and accessibility as it pertains to our lovely educational assistants. So we'll get started here with a prayer. So if you just want to center yourself in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray for acceptance and understanding, Lord. If I have no feet, let me journey with my eyes. If I have no sight, let me view with my mind. If I have no hearing, let me listen with my heart. If I have no speech, let me talk with a touch. If I have no hands, let me hold you in my thoughts. And if I have no control, let me be calm and at peace in your grace. Let me use what I do have to bless, accept, and understand others. Dear Lord, we all need assistance. Whether I need a wheelchair, a cane, a hearing aid, a guide, a visual aid, or a computer, allow me to show what I can do and model for others. Ability, acceptance, and thanks, and to follow you in all that I do. Amen. St. Leo, pray for us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And our land acknowledgement. The Creator gifted us with this land that we are blessed to share and care for together. The Calgary Catholic School District acknowledges that the land we gather on, Mokinsis, is the ancestral territory of the Siksika, Sitipi, the Siksika, Gainai, Pigani, and Amska P. Pigani. We acknowledge all the Treaty 7 signatories, including the Sutina people, as well as the Arhe Nakoda Nations, Bearspaw, Chiniki, and Wesley. This land is also the home of Métis Nation Region 3 and all others who call this place home. And just to draw your attention here to the district's priorities, we will be focusing this presentation on the student success piece. Okay, so again, so safety and accessibility is quite broad. So we've um, outlined some areas that we will be discussing in this presentation. Um, but again, we hope to just outline uh, these areas briefly so that you are familiar with them um, when you do work with students who have these safety and accessibility needs, either now or in the future. Moving on to mobility aids, which is our first slide, we are going to be discussing walkers and standing frames, which are uh, two uh, mobility aids that you may see. So the first is walkers, and this just essentially just helps with students' mobility, um, provides them a little bit more stability when they are walking. Um, and we just want to make sure that students are looking ahead and not to the ground when they are using these walkers, and just reminding to keep the walker close to them and walking slowly uh, just because some of these students when they do get a walker they tend to walk a little bit quickly quickly um, so we just want to remind them to slow down um, another piece here is that they do um, come with brakes and so we want to make sure that if they are using the seat that is sometimes attached to the walker itself that the brakes are applied before the student goes to sit down as well as if the if they are sitting in a chair a classroom chair that they apply the walker brakes um, before that. Uh, and then just keeping in mind any um, environmental hazards like cords on the floor or um, puddles of water that could pose as a tripping or slipping hazard. And then to talk about standing frames, you may um, see this when you're working with a student who doesn't have a lot of strength. Um, so they require a little bit more help when they are in that standing position. Again, this can help with uh, helping to stretch that student's legs and actually help to strengthen those muscles and help with um, allowing them to have a little bit more range of motion. Um, again, some of these standing frames also come, most of them come with a 
a table to complete their classroom work on. Uh, and then just want to outline here some safety, a safety aspect. So we want to just make sure that when students are using these standing frames that they that you are checking for their breathing and checking if they are feeling a little bit lightheaded. Uh, as you can imagine, going from a seated position to a standing position, sometimes we even feel this too, that we feel a little bit lightheaded. So this can also happen for our students. Um, and then just making sure that you are trained by um, your PT and OT uh, that is working with that student so that you are familiar with how to transfer a student into, um, into their standing frame. So some of the things to consider when safely handling a student in a wheelchair. Um, the number one thing is that students should not be pushing another student in the wheelchair. We know that these there are students in your in classes that want to be super helpful and help transport the child who's in a wheelchair from one place to another. But this is not safe for both the student who's pushing the wheelchair and the student who's in the wheelchair. It is safest to have an adult within the school um, push that student in the wheelchair. So some of the things we want to think about is uh, looking at the surroundings first. So making sure the ground is free of debris and not wet or slippery. Um, we know that during these winter conditions right now that this can be a real challenging one. So just making sure that you're working with your custodial staff if the area that you do take the child to outside at recess um, is a bit more icy, maybe asking for them to put down some more rocks or sand or ice melt just to help ensure safety for both the student in the chair and yourself. Um, having you yourself wear proper fitting footwear is really important. Having a non-slip sole that fits your foot securely is important in order to gain traction when pushing the child in the wheelchair. Uh, we know in the summer months or when it's nicer out that we want to wear sandals and things like that, but um, that doesn't give us quite enough stability when we are pushing that student and we don't ourselves want to slip and have the wheelchair get away from us. When the wheelchair is not moving at any time, the brake should always be on. So even if you're just um, stopping somewhere and you're on a flat surface, it is important to have the brakes on in case somebody um, comes and bumps the chair or something happens. Keeping the wheelchairs close to your body is really important um, to help ensure safety of yourself and your back. You want to think about keeping your elbows bent with your arms close to your body um, to avoid straining your shoulders and back muscles. Um, when you are, before you move the student, you always want to make sure that their footrests are locked in place so that their legs aren't lying around when you're moving and that their seatbelt is on. So we want to think about using our whole body and large muscles like our legs more than we use our small muscles to help generate the force. When we're going to start pushing a student, we want to start with one foot in front of the other and transfer our weight between our legs to gain momentum and that initial movement of the wheelchair. One thing to keep in mind when you are going through doorways or narrow spaces, make sure that the student's arms and feet are tucked in so that they aren't getting caught on the door frame. When going down a ramp, it's actually easier to walk backwards to improve control of the wheelchair. So keep the wheelchair close to your body and widen your stance to slowly transfer your weight from one leg to the other as you walk backwards. When you're going up a ramp, push the wheelchair forward, but keep it close to your arms and body. So you don't want to think about pushing the wheelchair really far away from you. Um, you want to still keep it close to your body at all times. Um, that way you can use your leg muscles to generate force when pushing that wheelchair. When going over a small bumper lip, it can be helpful to actually turn the wheelchair backwards as it's much easier for the larger wheel to go over the bump first. When we're turning the wheelchair, take small steps with your feet, turning your whole body at one time. You really want to avoid twisting through your lower back. When removing leg rest, fasten the seatbelt and harness or just parts of the wheelchair. Make sure you're positioning yourself as close to the wheelchair as possible to avoid reaching. You want to squat down by bending at your legs with your feet shoulder width apart, maintaining a neutral spine and avoiding bending or twisting through your low back. Before initiating any movement, you want to um, make sure that you're engaging your core muscles um, to help improve the stability of your spine and help to prevent injury of your back. Um, and again, remember other students should not be pushing the wheelchair. 
when it comes to lifts and transfers, each lift and transfer technique is specific to the individual student. So it's important to be trained by the school PT or OT to ensure safety for both yourself and the student. This is a liability issue, so it does need to be followed. We do appreciate that um, EAs who are really experienced with the student would have great knowledge um, and want to help train the other EA. Um, but um, again, we need to ensure that the training is coming specifically from the PT or OT who's assigned to the school. And if you do have staffing changes at any point in the school year, your school therapy team is more than willing to come out and do training for that. So communication is really important for this. You want to make sure everyone is working together and is ready. The student also needs to be involved in the communication. So you need to time the transfer. Um, like, for example, you count to three, like one, two, three, and then transfer the student. Um, this way, everyone is on the same page and the student knows what to expect um, and when to expect the transfer. You want to make sure you're checking your surroundings to make sure it's clear of debris and the floor isn't wet or slippery. Making sure there's also enough room to complete the lift or transfer and removing any unnecessary items or objects. You want to try and have all the required equipment close by to you. So things like pivot discs, step stools, transfer belts, make sure they're all either in place or within very close reach before you start the lift or transfer. For those EAs who are using a sling to help lift or transfer the student, make sure that you're checking the integrity of the sling and report any damage to your DLCT as soon as possible so that your therapy team can address that. So back care is extremely important when doing lifts and transfers. You want to engage your abdominal muscles prior to starting the transfer and keep them engaged throughout the process. So bending at your hips and knees and avoiding twisting through the back um, will help with that. Making sure you're minimizing the distance between your transfer surfaces. So you want to have the wheelchair as close to the toilet or to the other surface that they're transferring to. You want those areas to be as close as possible to minimize that distance. Keeping the student close to you um, is very important, especially when the seatbelt is removed because the student is less stable at that point. We also want the student to participate as much as possible because we really want to promote that long-term independence piece for them. So having them wait there as much as possible um, during those lifts and transfers is really important. And the last couple pieces, always remember to have the brakes on the wheelchair um, before you start the lifter transfer and the seatbelt should always be the last thing removed and the first thing replaced. So moving on here to uh, self-care and washroom or toileting routines. So again, a common theme is that uh, the EAs are required to be trained. So uh, if you are uh, maybe knowledgeable of previous students who have maybe similar recommendations, um, you will need to be trained with that specific student. So um, that's just one thing that we wanted to highlight here first off. Um, but then going into more of the access piece, uh, you may find that a child accesses the uh, washroom uh, with modifications. So it may have a lowering light switch or a door, a lower door handle to help with uh, accessibility. Um, but then that other piece of access that we wanted to touch on too is how, are, how will the child access areas within the washroom? So they may have, um, if they're using the toilet, they may have stairs to access it. They may use toilet armrests, uh, which is that picture to the, to the bottom right of the slide, um, which can all help um, which the toilet ring or sorry, the toilet armrest can help with balance. And then a toilet ring reducer can also help with stability while seated on the toilet. So um, however, some students may not use the toilet while in the washroom, they may be changed on a change table. So in this case, they may need stairs to access it or need to be manually lifted or mechanically transferred in a sling. Um, and again, the lifts and transfers piece was um, previously discussed with Kylie. So we won't get it too much into that, but moving on to this last point about clothing management. So this is also another component of self-care and depending on the child, uh, they may require different levels of support. So for example, you may be working with a child who uh, just needs help with undoing their pant fasteners, but they can independently pull down their pants on their own with maybe just having the EA provide close standby assistance. 
So again, any recommendations that are made um, when it pertains to safety and accessibility are trying to balance that um, independence piece for the student, but also the safety piece. And when it comes to safety of the student and the EAs, um, that is the priority. And so uh, recommendations will be made accordingly. And then our next slide here talks about classroom setup. So here, proper seating and desk options are really important considerations that the OT and PT make um, because we want to make sure that the students are comfortable and that they are conserving their mental and physical energy. Because um, with lots of these students, some of them have um, fairly complex needs. And so we want to make sure that um, their the energy that they do have um, is being uh, used in useful ways and allowing access to um, their curriculum and school environment. So again, if they're feeling uncomfortable in their seat, they may lose focus or switch their attention um, to wherever they're feeling discomfort in their bodies. Um, this can sometimes happen if their feet are dangling from their chair or maybe their shoulders are really elevated because their desk is too high. Um, so all these things can be, uh, again, if you see these things in the classroom or notice maybe the student is feeling a little bit more um, tired, uh, it could be related to their setup. So it's all things that you can bring to the teacher um, or discuss um, with us when we are out. Uh, so again, proper seating and positioning is also important for meal or snack time. So we want to make sure that the student's head and body are upright and that their ankles, knees and hips are supported at 90 degree angles um, to help with that safety aspect, aspect when seating. Um, however, there are some options on this slide for seating that uh, don't follow that nine degree rule. And um, these are sometimes call, called alternative seating options. So uh, these can provide different sensory um, input throughout the day. So some of them may allow the student to rock or wobble um, or even lean in place. Um, and then again, we just wanna make sure that in any of these options that the classroom environment should be kept free of any uh, tripping or um, falling hazards. Moving on here to fire drills, evacuations, and lockdowns. Now, obviously, these are not things that we uh, deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. However, they are very are still um, very important to know the recommendations of the students that you're working with, and um, what recommendations need to be followed in an event um, that one of these happens. So, uh, again, they may. A student may need additional support uh, during an emergency evacuation, such as a fire drill. Um, for example, a student using a wheelchair, um, they may be very independent from day to day, but they ne may need assistance with pushing their wheelchair um, when they're navigating those congested hallways, uh, especially if they're going against the flow of traffic uh, to reach a, a accessible exit of the school. Um, and then again, having knowledge of those uh, nearest but also accessible exits if they are a wheelchair user is also important because we do have students that um, you may be working with that acts or that move from class to class in the school. Um, and we just want to be mindful that um, we know where the accessible exits are um, if depending on which classroom that they are in. Uh, and then the last point of fire drills and evacuations is talking about the district protocol that was um, has been in place. And so this talks about that if students are in wheelchairs who are upstairs in a school, um, they will be moved to a designated area and stay with a designated staff member uh, in the case of a fire so that the fire department can come and evacuate them. So staff uh, are not to try and bring those students down the stairs. Moving on to lockdowns, uh, the student again may benefit from alternative seating arrangements. So um, maybe some of those uh, seating options that we discussed on the previous slide might be helpful to conserve the student's energy um, while they are waiting to, um, as opposed to sit, having them sit on the floor. And then we've also sometimes found that having something quiet for these students to do can be helpful um, as many have complex needs and so um, they may uh, not understand what's going on or may feel more anxious or worried. So we've suggested things like ooze tubes or fidgets or squeeze balls um, to help ease those worries. And then the last point here is about field trips. So uh, the school will be uh, has been provided with field trip checklists um, to go through uh, with um, the OT and PT as well as the 
um, sometimes DLCT and teacher to uh, make sure that the field trip is going to be accessible uh, for the student and um, have any recommendations put into place prior to. So we just encourage you that um, you are supporting a student during a field trip that you review that checklist and any recommendations that um, that may be or may have been provided. Okay, so now we'll talk about gym class. So model prompting can really help to encourage these students to fully participate in the requested activity. Cueing on how to alter an exercise can also be a helpful reminder for them. They do benefit from lots of positive feedback. So by having you participate with them and really encourage them, that will help encourage that participation piece for them. Sometimes we do need to slow the pace of the activity or allow some rest for these kiddos. We want to encourage participation as much as possible. And sometimes a rest break is really what is needed because as they fatigue, then you've probably seen their balance will start to decrease and then that puts them at risk for more falls. So it really is a fine balance between trying to have them participate as much as possible, but also still remain safe while doing so. So sometimes they just need a reminder to slow down as well because they also tend to get a bit excited um, about some of these fun activities. For equipment and boundaries, these can sometimes be altered depending on what activity is being done in gym class. You could look at options like using a lighter or a softer ball or something that's easier for the student to hold. The boundaries should be clearly defined for them so that um, they know what area is safe for them to be in. You can use cones or the painted lines on the floor to help with that. Um, you could also look to lower or remove the net if that will assist the student in participation depending on the activity. So when outside on the playground or during recess, we found that reflective vests can sometimes be helpful for those students to help not only yourself but the other EAs or staff that are outside on supervision. Um, keep an eye on those kiddos. So if you a student has maybe poor balance or they're a runner, um, the vest can be helpful so that everybody uh, knows to keep an eye on them. Recess bags are a great idea for those students that maybe don't have ideas on safe things that they can play at recess. Um, you can work with the physiotherapist at the school to um, come up with a recess bag that can include ideas and games that are safe for the child to play. And then they can ask a friend or a classmate to play a particular activity with them at recess. And then it also helps those students because then they're not um, having to try and think of an idea on their own as well. Sometimes parts of the playground or your school field might just be off limits for the students. I know that um, at some playgrounds, they're like with those spider webs, those can be a bit more tricky for students to climb and be safe on. So sometimes the student might just need to have um, that chat with their therapist that, you know, at this time, this part isn't safe for you to go on. You can play on these parts of the playground or this part of the field, but this area is off limits for you until you know, we have more time to practice and you can practice with your parents on your own, that type of thing. Looking at what the child is wearing in terms of clothing and footwear can be really important. We wanna make sure that if they already do have that decreased balance, that they're not wearing anything that could get tangled up on equipment and that their footwear is um, sturdy um, for them to you know, prevent slips and falls. Um, I have had a few students in terms of mitts, those thin little mitts, they are super great because they're so cheap and if they get lost at school, it doesn't matter quite as much, but. They just are not great in terms of grip on the playground equipment. And so I have recommended to a few families some of those mitts from Costco that are um, like the thin mitts. I believe they're the head brand um, and they have grips on them. And then that helps the student as well to not only keep their hands warm, but also be able to grip the playground equipment safely. If you are working with a student who does wear AFOs and your playground has a rock surface, it's very important to check the AFOs for rocks that may have gotten into the student's shoes to prevent rubbing and damage to the child's skin. So in terms of equipment, if you are noticing that the equipment that has been provided to your school or that you are using at the school is damaged, please do not use it. It is not safe um, if it is broken um, and it puts not only the student but yourself at risk as well. 
Um, if you notice that a piece of equipment that the child is supposed to have has gone missing, please let your DLCT know as soon as possible, and then your therapy team can work to replace that missing or damaged equipment as soon as possible. If you're unsure on how to use a piece of equipment or if you're not sure if you're using it properly, don't hesitate to ask. It's always great to um, be for us to make sure that you're using it safely for both the safety of yourself and the school. So AFOs, which I touched on um, briefly, are ankle foot orthosis, and they are custom braces that provide support and stability um, when standing and walking. When taking off the AFOs, it's important to check for red marks, and if those red marks don't go away after 30 minutes, it's really important for you to let the school PT or OT know so that we can address that with the family. So EAs will be trained by the PT or OT um, for these situations. And again, if you're unsure or need a refresher, please don't hesitate to ask. So some of these um, things in terms of tips for injury prevention, we have talked about before, but it is important that you're not only working to keep the students safe, but also it's really important to keep yourself safe. So injuries tend to happen when you're rushed, move quickly, or you skip steps. So it's important um, to go slow, and make sure that both you and the coworker, if you are working with somebody and the student, are aware of the plan um, so that everyone knows what's happening and there's less chance for unexpected movements or situations to happen. Make sure you're checking the floor to clear it of any debris or obstacles and make sure it's not wet or slippery. I'm wearing safe, supported, proper fitting footwear um, with non slip soles is helpful. Make sure you're gathering the items that you need and having them within reach uh, before you get started. Positioning and applying the brakes are very important to ensure that you're not um, twisting or turning when you shouldn't be. If the student does have a safety belt on their wheelchair or you're using the transfer belt, make sure that that's the first thing put on and the last thing that is taken. So to help prevent strain, we want to keep our small joints like our fingers and wrists in the neutral position and not bending or hyperextending them. Using our large muscles like our legs um, is helpful when transferring weight to generate force. We want to avoid moving, reaching or twisting and keeping the objects close to us um, helps with that. Pacing ourselves and avoiding fast or jerky movements puts our back into a better position. Try taking turns. If you are doing a lift or transfer with a coworker, you can try switching jobs to avoid performing repetitive tasks. And you want to avoid forceful pushing or pulling movements. And it's important for you yourself to practice proper posture and some daily stretching. So these general back care tips we've also reviewed, but just as a reminder, you want to bend through your hips and knees and not your back. Take small steps when turning. Make sure your core muscles are engaged when you are working with the student doing a lift or transfer. Keep your legs in a wide base of support to help use those leg muscles to the best of their ability. Keep the distance short between yourself and the, or sorry, between the two transfer surfaces and be close to the student as much as possible. Again, we want to encourage the student to assist as much as they can to help foster that long-term independence. So when to contact the OT or PT from your school. So if there's any changes in the EA, a position starts or ends, or there's staffing changes, we know right now that with the COVID situation that there are staff who are going out on leaves, we are happy to come out and train additional EAs to support those students to ensure that everybody, the student and the staff are all remaining safe while working with those students. If a student is new to the district or changes schools, it's important um, for us to be aware so that we can support that. If there's a change in the functional or medical status, like if the child has come back from having surgery, you notice their condition is worsening, they're starting to have falls, their transfers are becoming more difficult, or if there's been any new sort of illness or accident, it's important for us to know that. So if there's any changes to the established safety plan, like there's a change in the evacuation plan, or your school is having had renos, um, sometimes, especially now at this time of the year, with change of semester, um, starting a new subject might require additional support, like for gym class or CTS, or now the student might need to access another floor of the building. 
and if there's any questions regarding equipment. So if there's a change in the equipment or it needs to be repaired or replaced, um, or if they've gotten a new piece of equipment, it's important for us to be involved in that. And again, also that field trip planning piece is important um, to make sure that both you and the student are safe when out on the field trip so that the student can participate and enjoy as much as possible. So if there are any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat. This presentation will be uploaded um, onto EPD, so you can always go back and watch it or pass it along to your fellow EAs to watch. And if you could fill out the feedback form using the link on the slide here, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay, so again, we know that working with a safety and accessibility student, they all are very different and all have different needs. Um, so please ensure that you are reaching out to your school OTPT through your DLCT for support whenever you feel it is necessary. We're happy to come out and support you and the student on this. So the feedback link will be in the chat for you to access. So you can also grab the link there to complete. And thanks for coming out.